identify is the Dean of Academic Affairs, Dr. David Eden. David, would you please step up for a minute? Clap your hands. Now, is, do any of the students recognize this gentleman? No. See, that's why I wanted to see him. Well, David is the Dean of Academic Affairs, and his primary responsibility, and I don't want to downplay your job, is keeping the faculty and the adjuncts in check. It's, it's, like, it's like babysitting on a, a huge scale. It's a lot of work, and it's no thanks. So David, good luck. Thank you. The next one who was supposed to be here is Dr. Kirk Peters, and I had some really nice things to say about him, but he's not here. He's our Dean of Students. I was going to borrow his tux, but he's about this tall, and I'm a little heavier than he is. So next, I would like to introduce our Dean of Administration, Charles Cleary. Chuck, if you come up, please. Now, I doubt that any student in the room would recognize Chuck as he's affectionately known. But he has control of all the money. So you don't want to piss him off. <laughs> well, we don't have any money now. But, but when I was in the service, I worked in the finance office. And in the finance office, we took care of all the payroll. And that's a really important job. So if we if somebody really upset us in the finance office, their payroll records would just magically disappear. So we try to keep Chuck very happy so he can pay our bills. Thank you, Charles. <laughs> now I see my we have uh, some of our faculty here. Uh, the first one is Amy Fitz. Where's Amy? You're hiding over there. Come on up here. Amy is our business department coordinator, program coordinator. And it's pretty much a similar job to Dr. England, but she only has to babysit like five or six of us and then a whole bunch of adjuncts. And most of you probably have seen Amy either in marketing, capstone, or what else? Tap dancing 101. Okay. So you'll see Amy a little bit later. Next, I'd like to introduce uh, where's Mark? Mark Belusky and Tashian. Oh, Tashian is on the camera. Gene, would you take over? Take care of Tashian for a minute. Of course, I will. <laughs> Mark is our business faculty uh, member. And as of this year, he has a new nickname, Sir Edmund Belusky. Because many of you probably don't know this, but he actually accomplished climbing Mount Everest in May of this year. I'm not making this up. This is the truth. And everybody has a bucket list. And, and Mount Everest is on my bucket list. But I want to see it from about 40,000 feet, not climb it. So, congratulations, Mark. And we're waiting for your book, your memoirs, the sign of your thousands. And Tashiana is the baby of our faculty right now. And the one thing I can say about her is she was a student of mine many years ago which means I've been here way too long. <laughs> so Tashiana, Mark, thank you very much. Uh, the next person we need to, oops, sorry, is uh, we have a couple of our adjuncts here. Crystal, if you want to come up. Johnny, Jean, now that you're off the camera, you can come yeah. over here. <laughs> This is, this is my protege here. She wants my job in the worst way. But um, and I can't tell you how I was introduced to her because it was just the strangest meeting, and I'll say that for another day. But if you really want me to retire, I want you to take a piece of paper, write a number on it with five or six zeros in it. We'll see if we can work this out. And John is another reason I should retire because Johnny was a student of mine many years ago. So. You hear that long, you, when I start getting the grandchildren of my students, then I know it's too late. And Gene, I don't have enough dirt on you yet, so I, I can't say much about you. But I'll find something out for next year or the year after. There you go. Because unfortunately, I'll, I'll be around a few more. A few more. So here's some of our adjuncts. We also have, and this is, 
Nancy Murray. Please come on here. Well, I told Nancy earlier, I'm not sure how to introduce her because she has been a long-term faculty member for many, many years, retired a few, 30, 40 years. She's now on, she's now on, well, yeah, so I guess it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. She's now an adjunct faculty. She's on our advisory committee. She's been a, a trustee of the foundation for many years. So I didn't know where to put you in the program as far as your introduction. So what I'm going to do next year is she's a 14-year member of our golf league. And I'm only going to, and I'm going to ask her because I'm a fairly good golfer and she's a pretty good golfer. But when she plays me with the strokes I have to give her, I never beat her. I don't think I've ever beat her. You put your game face on. Yeah. All right. Um, well, you have the last one, Dr. Eddie. Come on up. I've never held my boss's hand. But she really screwed up my entire speech tonight because last week, she announced she's retiring after 23 years. And what I was going to say was, she's our equivalent of Queen Elizabeth II, who's been the reigning monarch of uh, England since 60 some years. And I said, you only have to go like 42 more years to tie her. So I'm going to give you an incentive. Where am I going to work? Because 20 some years ago, when you helped me get my promotion, I said, as long as you're here, I'm here. Now I'm out of a job. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> how about this? I'm not the only one thinking of retiring now. There's a whole bunch of us. If you haven't read the newspapers, the state of Connecticut forgets to put money into the retirement fund. So if all of us retire, you could bankrupt the state of Connecticut. You want, is that what you want to be known for? <laughs> Anything else I can say to make you stay, please? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor and privilege to announce Dr. Catherine Addy. As you can tell, we have a number of characters on our faculty. <laughs> I simply want to take a moment and say uh, to all you students and families alike, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here tonight, especially for this kind of an occasion. We always have a good time when we are handing out awards to students and honoring them for the good work that they've done. So congratulations to each of you students for, for earning this award and to your families for the support that they obviously are giving you. It's, a, it's an honor to have you here tonight. So thank you very much. You have no more excuses not to join our golf league next year. <laughs> That's every year you say, oh, I'm too busy at this. Well, now okay. you can play. <laughs> Don't. I'm the world's worst golfer, so that Well, that's perfect for our league. You haven't seen us. <laughs> Would you please stay here because I'm going to start the official part of the ceremony if I can find my notes. Hang on again. Okay. If you've looked at the, uh, what is this called? A program, thank you. <laughs> We'd like to recognize some of our faculty, staff, uh, and adjuncts uh, as honorary members. The, the, the Kappa Beta Delta is an honor society that's only granted to schools, two-year colleges that have been accredited under the ACBSP. And I forget what that means right now, but maybe uh, Amy can explain later. So out of about 1,500 schools, two-year schools, David, I've never, you never got back to me yet because I tried to find out that number. 1,500 or so, two-year colleges. 1,300, we're losing them. Wait a minute, only 170 of them have this accreditation. So that's a little over 15, maybe 10, 15%. But of those 170, only 70 of us have this accreditation. So you cut that in half. So the students that are being recognized, that are eligible for this, are probably in the 5 to 10% of 
of the students in the business colleges in the United States. So that's, that's what I'm trying to oppress. This is an extremely prestigious honor. And as a faculty member, it's an honor for me to be able to do this because sometimes I think I might have had an impact. And with that in mind, our first honorary inductee is Dr. Ed. Our second, Fernando, where are you? Fernando, come on down, sir. <laughs> Fernando Macaro is a Tonchus graduate, uh, I believe year 2013. He would step over to Dr. Ed. Went on to UConn, graduated from UConn. He's now with the Hartford uh, Financial Services, Hartford Insurance Company, uh, working in the financial services area. And one of my protégés, Jason Violet, Jay, please come up here. Jay graduated in 11, 2011, went on to get his undergraduate. Uh, somehow I convinced him to sit for the CPA exam, I don't know why. Uh, landed a great job with Coopers, no, not Coopers, KPMG, the largest international public accounting firm in the world. And he is now an auditor for the Department of Defense. Uh, checking on uh, your electric boat. So this is some of, not you, but <laughs> <laughs> these two are some of the past persons that would have been inducted had we had this honor society years ago. So we plan on over the next several years bringing back some of our alumni to recognize their, their accomplishments as well. So on the student side, and if the students would come up and line up to my right, uh, we have Tyler Acey. Tyler, can you come up, please? Okay, here. Ashley Berlain. Is Ashley here? Here's Ashley. She's not the head of the order, so it's easy. Uh, Hannah Ruzwa. Hannah. How are you doing, Hannah? Uh, Dan Ciafari Cf could not make it tonight, but he's also one of the inductees. Uh, Alicia Kalar, who's come out here Alicia. Uh, Luke Parker, where's Luke? Oh, there he is. Uh, oh, that's okay. uh, next I have uh, Brendan Howes, is Brendan here? There he is. Corey Johns, I don't think Corey is here tonight. I did not see him. Uh, Thomas Kenny Bowitz. Bowitz? Bowitz. I tried that. I'm sorry, Thomas. 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 And one of our other shining stars, who's the president of our business club, Nicole Lipkin. Uh, Kevin Martin, I know he's here somewhere. Proven your ability to excel in your academics. However, 
This quality of excellence is one that you should continue to implement as a lifelong trait. Callaway and Dell members realize the importance of being trustworthy. They recognize the importance of truth and honesty in our daily lives, in education, and in the business world. As members of Kappa Beta Delta, you should strive to be genuine and true to yourself, your family, your friends, and your business associates. If you hold yourself in high esteem, others will do so also. Implementing these characteristics of excellence, trustworthiness, and genuineness, genuineness will not be an easy undertaking throughout your lives, but it will certainly be a rewarding one. The colors of our honor society are blue and gold. Blue signifies okay, I forgot that one. And to the observer evokes radiant energy. Gold implies riches, values, and strength. Our emblem is diamond shaped, which indicates the highest of quality. Wear our colors and our key with pride. And please repeat after me to your pledge. Capital Beta Delta. I, I state your name. Thank you very much. Promise to abide by the guidelines. Established by the Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs. And Capital Beta Delta. I will uphold the ideals. Set forth, by our name. Set forth by our name. Excellence, trustworthiness, and genuineness. Excellence, trustworthiness, and genuineness. I agree to uphold the standards. Set forth by our chapter. Set forth by our chapter. Here at Thompson's Community College. Here at Thompson's Community College. Set forth to be an active member and to assist our officers of the Kappa Beta Delta. And to assist our officers of the Kappa Beta Delta. Congratulations. Now we'd like to present you with a certificate, Amy. And Amy has a few things. She's got the uh, graduation tassels. And she has the, uh, what do you call those things? Pins. So if you just bear with us, Dr. Ed. Really slow, I think, on uh, Halloween when the kids at the door. <laughs> Trick or treat. <laughs> We're just about done, but as soon as Amy is done with the, the handout of the goodies, she'd like to say a few things, and there are this.
plenty of food and refreshments, dessert. Uh, don't take all the food home because Tosh and Aaron's got how many kids in your house? Like 15 to where'd you go? Oh, there she is. <laughs> Her son's got a sleepover, so she'll touch some, but seriously, help yourself. So if you would like to take a seat now and let Amy do her thing. website. 